to create annotations on the Chai Sound Eco 5, we're going to use the annotations key. It looks like a, p a pencil on a piece of paper here. You're just going to press it, and you'll get a cursor here, and a few things appear on screen. First thing you can do is just simply start typing, and you can type whatever it is you'd like on there, and just place it there. If you want to change it, scroll the trackball over it, hit update, or I'm sorry, hit enter, and you can move it where you want on the screen and hit enter again. So just hover over, click, and enter. Now note that when I started typing, some things already appeared up here. Uh, so these are preset libraries that you can customize on your own in the system setup, which is a later video, and you can have whatever you want appear. So even though I'm on a vascular, it's going to the abdomen here, and I can hit change and keep going through, and it's going to give me different libraries of things that include this letter. So if I type a different letter, like A, it's going to give me various things that are available in that library. And again, I can hit change to scroll on through them, or you can just sit there and just type whatever it is you want on your own and leave it there. Down below here, we have some quick input text. You have six that you can place in there. In order to create these, you're going to first hit the edit key and type in. So I'm going to write test here. And then I'm going to click done. So here it tells me what my quick input text is. In order to choose that, I'm going here to input. See, it'll say input 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I want to input text 1. So I'm just going to scroll to that spot and push up to get that input. If I want to move it again, I can move it around like that. You can also adjust the font size uh, to something else. And all this can also be controlled as a default in the system setup screens. This load home position and save home position means when I hit that, I'm going to undo this annotation. When I hit this annotation button, it's always going to appear in the same place. If I want it to appear in a different spot, say over here, I would hit load, or I'm sorry, save home position, and it'll save it right there. If I want to go back to the home position, I'm going to hit load, and hit load, and then as soon as I move the trackball, it'll appear right over in that position. For some reason, it doesn't go right when you hit load home position. I'll just do that. But if I want to save that home position, I'll hit save. And then when I hit load, it'll go to the spot that I want. To delete those comments, I'm just going to go ahead and hit the delete key twice. And it will delete all the comments on the screen. I'll hit the annotation button again to clear those annotations. There's also an arrow pointer I can use just by pushing it down. It appears. And I can use the trackball to scroll it around. And I can also use the angle to change the direction of that arrow. To save it, I'd hit enter. Save another one. Notice that this four-way arrow appears. That means that when I scroll over it, I can hit the enter key and move that arrow again. And again, I can change the position or the direction of that arrow pointer and hit enter again. If I want to just get rid of that four-way arrow and I don't want any more, I hit arrow and it goes away. Now, if I didn't hit set, it's not going to appear up on the saved image. So make sure you hit set and that it changes color so you know it's there. To clear them, I'm going to hit the delete key. Now, when I want to take a measurement, there's a few different ways you can take measurements. Uh, we'll start with just the very basic measurement. First, we need a frozen image. And one way to tell you have a frozen image is that you have this uh, 256. It'll show you the frames here. And there's a little snowflake down there. That means that your image is frozen. Next, we're going to pick a measurement. First, we'll just choose the standard distance or trace measurement. And we'll show you calcs in just a moment. For distance, I can just push down, and it's going to give me a cursor up here. Very simple. I can just hit point 0.1 and then scroll to point 0.2 and hit enter. But if I don't like where I placed point 0.1, I'm going to hit the update key, and it's going to go back and forth and allow me to change that position. And I can go back and forth with the update key to adjust that position. And when I like where it is, I just hit enter, and it shows me the results box there. Now again, note that there's a bunch of items down here as well. This move result means I can just adjust the pl placement of this result box just by pushing it and moving the trackball. I'm going to go ahead and end that. And so now I've got my cursor back up there again. Right now it's saying if I want a distance, what type of distance measurement do I want? And you can scroll through these. You want to find an angle, a ratio, just standard distance. For area, do I want a trace, ratio, or ellipse? And if I want an ellipse, I'm going to start and I'm going to hit enter. And it's going to give me this circle here. And again, I can hit 
enter again and get that second portion. If I hit the update key, it's going to basically start all over. And I can first hit the update to go back and forth. And then I would hit the enter key to scroll the width of the oval. And then enter again. And then it's going to save that. So one thing to note on that, if you caught it, was, uh, well, first I can hit either distance or trace to get there. So I chose the area and ellipse measurement by choosing that over here. I'm going to hit enter for the first. And I can change. But if I hit enter and adjust this and then I hit update again, it's going to go back to that full circle. It, that may change in a later version, I'm not sure, but that's the way it works right now. So first get your two points, then hit enter, and then you're going to want to adjust the width of your ellipse. I'm going to go ahead and clear those. Now if I want to see a trace measurement, I'm going to hit the trace. I'm going to hit enter, and I can scroll around here. Now if I don't like the trace that I did and I think it's terrible I want to redo it I hit the update key and it will back up and I can continue to make that trace and if I want to you know update back up again and then if I, when I want to close the loop I can just hit enter and there's a beautiful trace right there go ahead and delete that now for calculations I'm gonna unfreeze that you're gonna hit the calc button and up here it shows my vascular calculations because I chose a vascular preset. Again, that can be changed. And up using this uh, trackball here, it says trackball select item, and I can select whatever it is that I want to measure. And this kind of a measurement will go to the report. And I save that, and my measurement is saved right there. Note that if I want to take a measurement on a previous, I still have this cine loop review down here, and I can scroll back through to a different point and make a measurement on that as well. Then when I want to remove those, I just hit the delete key, I can hit exit to get rid of that menu. It's very similar for the Doppler calculations. Hit Doppler, I'm going to go ahead and update. Okay, and then I can hit calc right here. And now it has all my vascular calculations here, and I can choose whatever I want, and there's auto trace functions in there. Obviously, this uh, is just for demonstration, so we're not getting a real good Doppler signal to do that. But any measurement you make in here will be what goes to the report. So <laughs> with this auto calc, it, I made a mess of it, but I'm choosing my starting and end point right here. And notice the auto trace follows it along, and it's got all these numbers here, which will go onto my report.